My name is Rich Sala. Um, this is my castle here, Hammerstone Keep. Um, it's a pretty decent sized castle layout. My main goal in making it, was, along with it being a fantasy castle, I was trying to be more historically grounded or realistic than your average, you know, high flying fantasy castle. So it's got a lot, my favorite thing is small details. So throughout it, it's got all sorts of little tiny details that are, you know, I've, I've did research and tried to, you know, do things that they would actually do on a castle. Like, for example, one of my newer features is the, um, the front gate here. Um, so it's got double portcullises, which go up and down. It's got a drawbridge. Um, it has the front battlements there. You see there's little arches underneath. There's actually holes in the bottom of there, which are called matriculations, so that the archers can shoot straight down if someone's directly below them. <clears throat> it also has a, a bucket of hot sand to jump down a murder hole if there's invaders going through the gatehouse. So in like popular culture, you'll see hot oil being dumped down on invaders. But in reality, oil is really expensive in the Middle Ages, so they'd use like sand. Sand can hold a surprising amount of heat. I and mean, you can heat it almost to the point where it becomes glass. Um, also, one thing that people tend to like is the, the outside of the wall here. Um, I've kind of dumped some of these plates in here to emulate what actually how a medieval wall would have been built. They only really used the big stone blocks on the outside because that's expensive and hard to move and did more of like a gravelly, cementy thing on the middle. Um, let's see, what else? Okay, and so in the, the main focus of the castle, though, is the back of it. So the entire back is cut open and it has all of the rooms that a real castle would have. So you, of course, have your great hall with your big feast table. Um, but then on the next floor, you have, you know, your traditional, you know, your throne room because this is a royal castle. A king lives here. So this is where he'd hold court and currently is you know, receiving news from one of his scouts. Uh, on the next floor, we have the living quarters. So space was at pretty much at a premium on inside a castle. So most living quarters, like the one on the right, only have one room. Uh, there's a few more that you can't see there in the back that are even smaller than that. But on the left, we have the royal suite of rooms. Being the king, you know, he comes with some privileges, so he has a full three rooms. Um, outside is the solar with the table. Um, that is more like a living reception room. You know, that, if, if the king was having a very a private intimate meeting with someone else, they would be in there. Um, to the right of that is the, um, the wardrobe. So a wardrobe was a full room back in medieval times. It was a combination dressing room, clothes storage, and like storage for small personal valuable effects. Um, kind of barely see it, but in the background, in out the solar, there's the royal bedchamber. Uh, it's one of the details that's harder to see when the castle's put together, but it's fully fleshed out. And then on the top floor, we have the, um, the armory. So when a castle would fall, it would fall from, so invaders would come in the front and then go up the stairs. So you wanted your armory to be as high up as possible, the last thing to fall, because if it falls, then you no longer have access to your weapons, and now your enemy has access to your weapons. And finally, in the towers, we have a few different things. So on the bottom here, we have a what's what's called a a, um, a cabinet. So it's like uh, like the presidential cabinet is where the term came from. That term came from was from these. It's kind of like a general purpose study. Um, in this case, it's like a war room. So he's got his tables, maps, planning things out. And above that, we have the the tower cell. So a tower cell, as opposed to like a dungeon, so a dungeon or oubliette was, would be somewhere, somewhere where you'd like chuck people you'd never want to see again and maybe you'd put some food in after them. A tower cell is kind of the opposite of that. Think like the Tower of London. It's where you put prisoners that you want to treat nicely, that you want to think well of you after you release them. Um, so, and on the left tower we have another cabinet. Uh, this one is more of a wizard study. Um, so he, there he's got a telescope and a, a, a writing desk. It's also got his books on the left, which are locked up because, you know, books were incredibly valuable back in the medieval times because they all had to be handwritten. And on the, top, on the top floor of the left tower, we have the chapel. So a medieval castle would always have a chapel. And the chapel would be positioned as high as possible because you want it to be as close to heaven as possible. And then capping it off, we have just, you know, normal watchtower with some, you know, battlements. A guy up there with a, a spy scopes, you know, looking off into the distance, keeping watch. Ah, that's so great to see you. so much detail in these rooms back here. So then if we move forward to kind of the in front of the castle, what scenes do we have playing out, out front here? Okay, so here we have a market, you know, a bunch of people gathered in, 
you know, to buy and sell their goods, farmers. Uh, got a town crier, you know, with his ringing his bell, you know, announcing, in this case, that peace has been declared because the kind of scene that I have set up and over the whole castle is, you know, the Lion Knights and the Dragon Knights are normally at war, but, you know, peace has been declared. The king, the Lion Knight King is coming to visit. Um, you know, he's, and they're going to have a royal, a great banquet to celebrate. Um, but all the knights are on display because the Dragon Knights want to remember why they surrendered. Um, but also in the market here, we have, you know, we have an ice wizard um, using his powers for good, you know, selling some ice cream. Uh, we have someone else, you know, a bit of a shady individual running off with that noble's money and jewels. But he's not looking, he's looking where he's running away from, but not where he's going. So he's going to get an unpleasant surprise so shortly. Um, and as I said before, there's the, King's the Red King's delegation coming in the front gate. And, you know, just some more knights kind of on display. As well as behind the fountain, there's a, a lift system so that you can put goods down into the underground area without having to carry them down the stairs. Speaking of the underground, what do we have underneath here? Okay, so we've got a few things going on. So what everyone likes to look at over here is the treasure room. And up, oh, it looks like someone's been a little bit... So th that is normally a trap with the skeleton on there. It's on pretty much a hair trigger. So given the fact that it sprung, I imagine that a small child has put his hand in there recently. Um, the rest of the castle, I have kind of a kind of Mines of Moria inspired, you know, underground city. So we've got a training area over here on the left. Um, it actually has a little bit of a reference to one of my favorite fantasy book series, which is getting a Netflix or a um, Amazon adaptation soon. The Wheel of Time, the the guy with the staff, you know, beating up some of the knights. Um, so, and in the background there, we have the crypt. We have a couple monks carrying, you know carrying a coffin in to be stored in the crypts. Uh, on the left there, we have a door to like the rest of the underground and some lost dwarves asking for directions. One, one thing I love here is the use of your flame pieces with those lights to give the kind of flickering uh, candle torch effect. Ah, yes. Yeah, that took a lot of effort. Um, I had to actually cut down the LEDs that I bought to actually be able to fit them all inside those torches. And, you know, the, there's wires going up and down, and I, I've hidden them below that. See, the, the blade path that's like one level above the base plate? I've got the wires running underneath that. No, that works super well. And then you've got even like the staircase that goes up to the main level. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the main way to access things, along with you can kind of see in the background there's the lift. And if we go back above ground then and kind of move out in front of the castle, you've got kind of a moat area here before you reach the, the outer portions. Okay, yeah, so here I've got, you know, a dry moat. So a lot of times when people see a moat, they think, oh, it's, it's full of water. So really that would only be dependent on where the castle was. A lot of places, you know, you couldn't just have a river if there wasn't a river there already. So a lot of castles had dry moats. So here we got some spikes chiseled out, and that's still pretty impassable. Me. But if it's a dry moat, where will, where will my alligator live? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I guess in the river over here. Um, also, we have a, um, a uh, an abandoned building with a cellar that this shady individual has decided to store his loot and weapons in. Uh, he's sneaking in there. Um, we've got a few other things. we got some cornfields with a farmer and some more shady individuals stealing corn. <laughs> There's a lot of shady individuals in this town. There are. Uh, so these are stealing corn. And he's got the farmer's got his dogs running after him and is chasing him with his scythe. Um, see, and then we got the uh, the mill. So the mill is motorized using the old style nine volt motors geared down with a worm gear. Um, so yeah, that. So yeah, and it, it actually it, it's interesting that drove part of my design for the river itself. Because my first instinct was to just do stud dumping and just dump a whole bunch of studs in the river and call it call it a day. Because those were out there in pick-a-brick at the time. But I was driven to do like a static brick-based one because that wouldn't interact well with the turning wheel. But then when I did that using the pieces that I had on hand, I realized that you could see through them. And I had the idea to do underwater details. So the, I hit all sorts of little Easter eggs underwater. Like right there is, you know, you can see the one ring... Uh, there's a school of fish. Um, underneath the bridge a little bit, there's a skeleton. He's hanging on to a treasure chest down there, but it's not really visible. It's a little too far under the bridge, I think. And then we got a few other details here. Some washerwomen, you know, going down to the river to wash clothing. Um, a a fisher, fisherman and lazy day on the river. Um, and then some pine trees. And particularly the larger pine tree I'm proud of. It, it's my own design. 
It's the, um, it has kind of like the life preserver type pieces with the, um, the Exoforce robot arms attached all around in a ring with the new style grass going out of those. So I was, I was happy how that turned out. One, one thing I love about this build, and as you've been describing it here, is the kind of amount of research and thought you've put into capturing a lot of the, the rooms in the castle and just all sorts of these elements in that sort of more historical type of build. So what type of research did you do into to this era then in terms of trying to get all that, that correct? Yeah, so I've always been a big fan of medieval thing, medieval things. Like back years ago in like fourth or fifth grade, I had, you know, medieval history, which kind of like started me on the path. From there, I've looked at things on, you know, on, on the internet, and for each individual feature I make, I tend to like do a Google image search to see what they looked like, and also read different articles about like what rooms a castle would have, and the most single researched individual thing was the last part of this castle that I built, the front wall. It, it was something else, and then I rebuilt it recently over this last year. I watched a bunch of videos. There's a great YouTube channel, Shadowversity, that goes over like really in-depth medieval stuff, and I I used his videos, and they I think it turned out great. No, no, I agree. It's fantastic. So, do you know how long and tall this whole layout is? Because it's quite quite imme immense here. Um, I don't know the inches offhand, but it is five by two um, dark or sorry, of the large light gray base plates, which I think are 20 inches on a side. I'm not I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, and for how tall it is, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's, it's still very impressive. When you bring this to a show then, what, what is that process like in terms of getting it here and setting it up? Ah, so the castle comes apart in a few distinct sections. There's two, uh, two large gray base plate sections from the front area, so it divides into three sections total. Then the, um, the top kind of market-ish front wall area slides off of the underground, and then each individual floor comes off like a modular building. Yeah, and it looks fantastic once you have it all set up here. So thank you so much for bringing this out to the show and for giving us a tour of everything. Yeah, no problem.